In this short video, let's consider who should be referred for colonoscopy following discovery of a polyp on colon capsule endoscopy. Should we remain chained to colonoscopy guidance, or is it time to consider capsule-centered decision-making? Has the time come for us to practice more realistic medicine? But before offering you my personal perspective, I'd like to preface this by a reminder that all healthcare professionals should consider not only the patient journey, but also our contribution to global warming. Just a reminder that endoscopy consumes a huge and unsustainable resource, amounting to around 1.5 kilograms of waste per procedure. In 2018, around 11 million colonoscopies were performed in the United States. Around 700,000 colonoscopies and flexi ciggies were performed in the UK. And in every sense of the word, this is unsustainable. Currently, the guidance for colonoscopists engaging in screening, surveillance and scoping symptomatic patients recommends a polypectomy if there are three or more diminutive polyps or any polyp six millimeters or greater. Minimally invasive capsule and virtual colonoscopy raises new questions. A snare is unavailable. However, the investigation provides a new opportunity to grade risk and decide in the cold light of evidence how to advise ongoing polyp management. Consider this remarkable publication by Ponugotti reporting the prevalence of cancer in small and diminutive polyps sent for his histological assessment. This table summarizes the findings. Note the low prevalence of high-grade dysplasia in small and diminutive adenomas with no invasive cancer detected. Also note the very low prevalence of alarming histology in small and diminutive hyperplastic polyps and sessile serrated adenomas. Surely, in a healthy screening population, there is no imperative to refer smaller diminutive polyps for urgent colonoscopy and polypectomy. I suggest our decision on polyp management should consider this data set. In addition, capsule colonoscopists might reflect on the radiological response to polyps discovered on virtual colonoscopy. CT colonography predated colon capsule by a decade or more, and radiologists are confronted with the same question, who needs a referral for urgent polypectomy? This composite indicates the definition of modern 3D fly-through virtual colonoscopy. Should this polyp be referred for urgent excision? In 2018, Perry Picard, and an eclectic group of polyp scientists and modelers published this remarkable paper that provides an unprecedented deep dive into the natural history of colon polyps. The modeling provides remarkable insights. By aggregating a vast array of data, they were able to calculate the number of polypectomies needed to prevent one cancer over 10 years. Their modeling is striking. Considering diminutive polyps, around 2,300 polypectomies would be required to prevent a single cancer over a 12-year period. And for small polyps, around 300 excisions would be required. They also asked what might be expected if polyps less than 10 millimeters in diameter were left in situ and not managed over a 10-year period. Again, remarkably small numbers of small and diminutive polyps would advance to malignancy. Like the Ponugotti study, this and other similar studies indicate that in the screening age group we're dealing with, few small and diminutive polyps are likely to cause morbidity and mortality. Yet we have chosen to mandate that the discovery of three or more diminutive polyps or any polyp six millimeters or greater should immediately trigger a referral for colonoscopy. Consider all that implies for patient experience, the one in a thousand risk of perforation, 
one in 400 risk of post-polypectomy bleed, not to mention the impact on health economics and, of course, our contribution to the carbon footprint. So, looking at the broad sweep of evidence and faced with decision making, capsule endoscopists, like virtual colonoscopists, are right to use the evidence to seek a response to the question, who needs referral for an urgent polypectomy? My suggestion is that we take our cue from the radiologists who have now adopted the guidance, forget the tiny, watch the small, and remove the large.